This is the News Load. Hi, I'm Carrie Ann Stevenson. I'm here with News Load, and I am so excited, beyond thrilled, to be able to interview today Ian Sirota. Hi. Hey, hey, how are you, Carrie? I'm amazing. So, first things first, where were you born? Uh, Montreal. Montreal. How's your French? C'est pas la même que quand j'ai né là-bas. Tu vas français? What? <laughs> exactly. I could have said anything. <laughs> Croissant? <laughs> <laughs> Poutine? <laughs> there you go. That's what I got. Um, what's your favorite snack in Montreal? Ah, uh, snack. I would say like uh it's not a snack, but I uh I love uh steamed hot dogs, chez show. Oh yeah. Rhymes. With toppings? Yeah, they all come with mustard, onions, and coleslaw. Ooh, that sounds like a good time. <laughs> it's a good a hot doggy good time. I'm a fried onions kind of girl, like lose it over fried onions. Oh, it's good to know. Yeah, yeah, just letting you know. <laughs> um, how were your parents uh, in your comedy career? Were they supportive? No, not really. I don't think so. I mean, my father's passed, but he wasn't very supportive. And my mom, sort of, because she uh, kind of had that showbiz bug. But I kind of fell into comedy. It wasn't what I started out doing. What did you start out doing? I was working at a newspaper as a reporter and I lost my job and a girlfriend took me to a comedy show and uh, I thought, oh, I could do that. And she's like, well, then do it. And then I did. And that's how it kind of started. What a supportive girlfriend. Is she now your wife? No, <laughs> she's not my wife, but we're still friends. If that counts. <laughs> that's good. But you are married. I am married. Yeah. At last <laughs> I checked. <laughs> I have to call her and ask if it's still going on. <laughs> With kids, yeah? I have three kids, yeah. I have a 30-year-old, I have a 15-year-old, uh, I have a 9-year-old. Wow, so just like every generation. Yeah, I've had sex three times so far. <laughs> In every decade. <laughs> That's right. I like to spread it out. <laughs> put your mark, put a kid in there, you know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> What's it like being a comic and a parent and a husband? Uh, it's hard being a comic and a parent. Uh, I have to switch from my nighttime routine during the weekends to my daytime routine during the week because my wife works a nine to five job. So I do my children Monday to Thursday. So it's like a lot of work, but uh, I'm used to it now. So I just don't sleep. Are they funny? Do you have funny kids? My daughter is more artistic. Uh, she's a beautiful. She's great at drawing, uh, charcoal drawings. And my son is very funny. I talk about him a lot in my act. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Do you have you experienced any crazy fans? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I have a couple of. Uh, I have a couple of people have seen me a lot of times. Uh, I have a one fan that's seen me probably like 30, 40 times. But it's like just supportive or like creepy? Yeah, yeah, supportive. But it gets to the point where like when someone's laughing, when they've seen you many times, you're like, how can you still be laughing at that joke you've heard 30 times now? <laughs> like, it's just odd more than anything. I don't think it's uh, like scary or anything. It's not like baby reindeer or anything. Oh, <laughs> Oh my God, baby Ray. That's a perfect example of like a horrible fan. That is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I guess, you know, like if, if you're a comedy fan, it would be like a Bon Jovi fan, you know, we're halfway there, you know, like constantly <laughs> wanting to hear it over and over again. But I bet John Bon Jovi, if like he took you back upstage, backstage, and you said, I've seen you 150 times, he'd be a little bit creeped out. Yeah, and you show him the tattoo. And <laughs> That's like, right. Yeah, it's a little odd. Like, you know, it's just strange, but not, you know, it's nice. I'm just, I don't know how to deal with something like that. Has anybody given you their underwear? No, no, no. 
No, I'm not, not at all. What is your underwear scene on tour? Do you pack like 30 pairs kind of thing? Wow, what a strange question. I overpack. Yeah, I'm an overpacker with underwear and an underpacker. It depends if I'm traveling like out west because uh, I just came back from out west. I was on tour out in BC and I only brought a carry on and uh, like a personal item. So I packed light, but I did laundry while I was there. Uh, do you have a favorite tour snack? A tour snack? Yeah. Well, this is like snack centric. I know, <laughs> okay. I know. I, Are you I, hungry I, or something? Or? I, I love to eat. eat food is <laughs> okay. wonderful. A, a tour snack. I guess I like to eat what's whatever that area is kind of famous for. So like when I was in BC, I ate a lot of Japanese food and a lot of fish. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So opening up for like Jerry Seinfeld, what was that uh -huh. like? Well, I work a, um, I'm actually doing it now. That's why I've been pretty busy this week. I work a uh, charity event called Humor Me in Toronto, where I train uh, uh, CEOs and business people, politicians, uh, famous people, had to be comedians. And then they go against each other as a contest and we raise money for charity. And every year we bring in a big act and one year we brought in jerry seinfeld so i worked with jerry seinfeld they didn't open with him specifically but i worked with him at this event uh together and what was that like that was great i mean it was only a meet and greet like we have a meet and greet but sometimes we we have had we've been doing this for like uh, 10 years now uh they hang out with us backstage and sometimes they don't so like uh, howie mandel hung out with us backstage that was awesome and uh even like complimented me and gave me a tag for one of my jokes which i thought was great oh that is so good because a he was listening and b he's being supportive and encouraging yeah yeah Aww. yeah i thought yeah 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 and then he bought just for laughing killed everybody's lives but <laughs> like so at that, that moment he was awesome <laughs> but he doesn't shake hands or sit down. Or... Uh, no, he doesn't do that. No, no, he doesn't do that. No, it's so interesting. Um, what was Robin Williams like? That I lived in New York City uh, many moons ago. And I, uh, I worked with Robin Williams at uh, Stand Up New York. And uh, that was amazing because I after I did my set, he was on right after me. I sat down at a table right next to Billy Crystal, who was watching Robin Williams perform with his wife, which was really cool, kind of like a little moment there. Oh. And did Robin say anything or do anything that struck you? Yeah, he did, actually. Uh, he's, uh, I don't know if I should tell. <laughs> it's not like you, a you nice did... story. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, we don't I'll tell you off camera. I okay, don't think I okay, want to. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jim Gaffigan, you know. Jim Gaffigan, the same event, humor me. Uh, very funny guy. Uh, Sebastian Manicotti, work with him too. Very funny guy. Uh, uh, worked with uh, Tig Notaro a couple years ago. Uh, last year, it was, who was it last year? I worked. I can't even remember last year. <laughs> I can't remember who it was last year, but like they're all, some of them like to hang out by themselves and not be bothered. And some of them are like very friendly and very outgoing. Yeah, I guess it depends on your mood. Like I personally, before I perform, I'm very nervous. Uh, right. So I want to be left alone kind of thing. And I guess, you know, like people who have been doing it for, for, you know, decades, uh, it's it's a walk in the park for them and they you know would rather hear your story and chat it up with you eh yeah I guess with Seinfeld I remember the Mets were in the playoffs at the time so he just wanted to listen to the Mets and come out the last second and as soon as he was done he was gone listening to more Mets or or the the you know. I, I think the game was over but he was off back to New York kind of thing his hotel in New York probably li listening to the after plays or something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Do you find you tour the US as well? Yeah. Uh, not anymore. I had a green card for a couple of years. 
And then I let it expire, moved back to Canada. And you can't work in the States unless you have a green card. So I do not have a green card. So uh, you can't tour in the United States without one. Mm -hmm. But when you did tour in the United States, you know, and I guess because it was pre-COVID and everything, do you notice the difference between American audiences and Canadian audiences? Yeah, I even notice the difference between American comedians and Canadian comedians. There's a huge difference. Uh, Canadian comedians are usually better writers of jokes and uh, maybe in general funnier, but Americans are much better performers than we are. They're really uh, gregarious and they're really out, very show busy, very out there. So you can learn from both uh, styles. So it was good to go there. Noticing the money is a huge difference. Like I had yeah, no and, need. And the amount of work is a huge difference. Uh, mm. Everything is bigger there, but there it's more doggy dog. And here it's uh, a community where you kind of know everybody and it's not so doggy dog. And you're not like, like I would work with somebody there and not see them for three years where I work with somebody here and I'll see him like six months later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, has anybody been unprofessional with you? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Without naming names, can you tell the story and how you handled it? <laughs> Without naming names. Uh, geez, I think it would give it away. How many yeah. people watch this? <laughs> uh, just, I just, just think it's in any profession, people are unprofessional. Sometimes I say something, sometimes I don't. It depends, but I usually will say something. I remember once somebody uh, rushed me out of a gig once really quick and then they asked me for a lift again because uh, they had a they had to be somewhere the next day and they, I was giving them a lift and they kind of lit me a bunch of times and then like they wanted to leave quickly I didn't want to leave right away and I was driving so I didn't you know leave right away and then the next time I had to work with them uh, I said I don't want you to rush me out of the gig and that started like a little bit of a conflict but I mean what are you going to do? Yeah yeah when you're the chauffeur you you call the shots you know like you want to have yeah that's how you know? i see it yeah, <laughs> that's how i see sure. it you're driving you you're the one that decides when My you leave goodness um but that's nothing major like nothing i mean i've had some jokes stolen from me and some stuff like that that's happened as well but uh sometimes there's nothing you can do about it and sometimes you can call the person on it yeah it's tough because um, in the amateur scene, uh, the kids are a little bit more green and inexperienced, and the gossip, and the 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 trash yeah. talk, and the the competition because they don't understand that you know their actions have consequences, and they're going to lose gigs, and it's going to be completely unprofessional. Uh, it got to the point where uh, a Hamilton group. Uh, one of the, you know, like club owners was like, look, kids, you got to behave yourselves. <laughs> this yeah. Is oh, too much. oh, really? Like levity or? Uh, yeah. Levity. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's more, I don't think that changes really uh, when you become a professional a lot. I think that still goes on the gossip and the backstabbing and all that stuff. But I think what happens is that as you do this more often, you decide that you're not going to engage. And you're not going to be like that. And you're not going to do it as often. And you're not, when someone shit talks somebody, you're just not going to answer or add fuel to the fire because you know where that's going. And, you know, I don't want to be a part of that. I remember uh, I was working in Halifax and I was working these two openers. And this one opener after the other opener was not doing well on stage was talking, you know, shit about them. And I was like, and they're telling me like their history and what they don't like about them. I'm like, I don't want to get involved in your politics, your local politics. I, I like you both. I think you're both funny and let's just have fun this weekend. Cause I don't, I don't care. I don't, uh, that's not part of it for me. That's not why I'm doing this. Yeah. And it's gotta be very interesting when drugs and alcohol get involved as well. Like Jamie Kennedy, his career has been like uncomfortable. Mike McDonald must've been, you know, a little bit, you know, loopy sometimes. Um, it must have been very interesting when, you know, like 
I guess like the music scene, when there's drugs involved and such, sometimes they're just uncontrollable. Yeah, I, I, I'm not personally a heavy drug user. I had my time when I was much younger before I was even doing this and I won't be doing it again. And I just, I'm not in that scene. So I don't, uh, I'm not doing that. So I don't see it. I know what's going on, but uh, I'm not interested and I'm not a part of that. Yeah. The after parties and such, you know, you're driving home to your kids. Right. Exactly. And I know I have to be responsible and not be wasted on the way home and have one beer at work and then that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm so happy that you're responsible and I'm, I'm so impressed <laughs> with uh, the, the roster of people that you've connected with uh, Robin Williams specifically. I'd love to hear all about it. And uh, I, I think you're hilarious. And is there um, someplace we can follow you to see where your next shows are? Or if we want to like, I guess it's only corporate, um, classes that that are being taught yeah i don't uh, that's a, it's for a charity i don't teach comedy i just do this for uh, this corporate event uh but i you can follow me on instagram or on facebook or just look me up i'm around i'm a touring comic i've been doing this for 30 years i'll be in your city soon i'll, I'll be back again and uh i guess the next thing i have coming up is that event is in October, but it's a charity event, so I don't think that'll help. But I, I'm all over the place. I have a, I have a gig in Oshawa, but you're in the London area, I think. So I don't know when's the next time I'm back there. So I, I'm gonna be there prior to this interview airing, but uh, I'll see you guys again soon. For sure. Well, I'll definitely be uh, seeing you at Yuck Yucks. Uh, I think it's this weekend. And yeah, I hope you come on down. Yeah, I'm definitely going to come on down. And uh, um, if you can just say one more thing, if you can say it loud, say it proud. I love news load. What's the last word? News load. Okay, yeah. I love news load. This is the news load.